Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we got another video game haul for you, this time covering all the games that I picked up in the month of February. I don't plan on picking up any more in February because as you can tell from the thumbnail I picked up a few heavy hitters for the PlayStation Collection and I'm really happy about those and we'll touch on more of those later but uh, yeah I am uh, figured this would be another good video. The last one seemed to do pretty alright and uh, yeah I'm excited about all the games I got. I think there's about 24 here that we picked up and Let's just jump into it. A first one named wife, she collects uh, Japanese Pokemon games and she decided to jump into the realm of Japanese Zelda games, this time picking up A Link to the Past and Four Swords for the Game Boy Advance. Um, I haven't played this one yet, or either of them yet, really. Uh, they're on my to playlist, so she's excited about it, therefore I'm excited about it, and the Japanese cartridges always look pretty sweet, so I'm really happy to have this one. A game I had for the PlayStation that I always really enjoyed, even though it's not that great, is LEGO Island 2 Brickster's Revenge, and now I've got the Game Boy Advance copy. I need to find the PS1 copy. Uh, haven't stumbled across it yet. I'll probably end up ordering it online here pretty soon. Uh, but yeah, I've heard the Game Boy Advance version is not great, but uh, maybe I'll find out one day for myself. The last two Game Boy Advance games that we picked up this week are for One Named Wife's Yu-Gi-Oh! Collection, where we've picked up Destiny Board Traveler and Seven Trials to Glory, both for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, again, I know nothing about it, but she said she tried them both out a little bit. Destiny Board Traveler, not that great. Seven Trials to Glory is just fine. Picked up some Game Boy games this week too, and I'm always a sucker for Nickelodeon games, so we picked up Ren and Stimpy Show The Idiots for the Game Boy. Haven't tried this one out yet. Uh, I think I only own one other game, or Ren and Stimpy game. I think it's for the Sega Genesis. I think I've got it complete in the box over there. I think it's invention, something to do with an invention. I don't remember, but I'm a sucker for Nickelodeon games. Grew up watching Nickelodeon, and they always have a special place in my heart. Another Game Boy game is James Bond 007 or 007 James Bond, whichever way it's technically titled. Uh, this one came out alongside uh, Goldeneye, I believe, or pretty much in the same realm. Uh, I played it for about an hour, and it actually is pretty fun. It's got that Zelda feel to it, uh, where you have like an item on A, an item on B, asking around, trying to figure out where to go and whatnot. Uh, it seems like a good time. I need to finish playing it. I think I got probably... Uh, maybe around halfway through it. It's a pretty short game from what I found online, but yeah, pretty fun. Definitely would uh, check this out. Similar to LEGO Island 2, this was a game that I played a lot on the PlayStation and uh, saw it for the Game Boy and couldn't leave it there. It's A Bug's Life. Uh, a Bug's Life on the PlayStation is a really, really fun game, a really good license game at that. Uh, and I've heard that the Game Boy game is actually pretty good too. I don't remember. I haven't actually played it myself, uh, but I know the speedrunning community has been doing something with this lately, but really happy to have this one. The last one here is for the Game Boy Color, it is Rocket Power Get in Air. Uh, again, Nickelodeon games, always a sucker for them, and Rocket Power, I loved the show, but I also, at the time of recording this, am the uh, world record holder for Rocket Power Team Rocket Rescue on the PlayStation 1, so maybe I'll have to add another Rocket Power title to my world record list. <laughs> Who knows, but yeah, Rocket Power Get in Air. Sticking to cartridges, got two N64 pickups this week. First one is Pokemon Snap. Uh, one Named Wife loves this game. I never really saw the appeal, but I also haven't played it myself. Uh, so maybe I'll have to give it a shot right before the new one comes out here pretty soon for the Switch. Uh, so yeah, the original Pokemon Snap will take some, uh, take some pictures. Another one that I had for the PlayStation is Toy Story 2 Buzz Lightyear to the Rescue. Really, really good PS1 game, and I've heard the N64 one is also a pretty faithful... Uh, or not faithful, but a pretty good version of it as well. So I saw it sitting there. I said I didn't really need it because I have the PlayStation 1 version, but couldn't just leave it alone. So I picked it up. Bought this one on a whim based on the cartridge itself and a couple screenshots that I saw online when I searched it up. This one is Shadowgate for the NES. Um, I know nothing about it other than a few pictures. It looked interesting and the art on it itself is pretty dang cool if you ask me. I love NES cartridges, just something about them. They just display so well. Uh, so yeah, I don't buy NES games very often, but uh, I saw this one and I just could not leave it alone. Another NES pickup here is, again, based off of a PS1 game that I played when I was a kid. It's Qbert. Uh, something about the little guy. I love him. He's great. Little orange blob. <laughs> played the uh, PS1 version of this a lot. I think there's a PS4, ver PS4 version that was on PS Plus that I picked up and played it a little bit. It was pretty interesting. My mom loves Qbert and uh, yeah, just something about him. He's just interesting and I think he's pretty dang sweet looking and I just couldn't leave this cartridge alone. Alright, moving past the cartridges, we're heading into disc-based games. This one was uh, just kind of a last-second grab. We, we were ordering a bunch of games off of a guy off one of the Facebook groups and one named wife said, why not? And we got the Lego Batman game for the Wii. Uh, I know this game came out on pretty much every console available, but we decided to pick up the Wii version. Will we play it? 
probably eventually. Will we pick it up for a different console and play it that way first? That's the more probable answer. But yeah, it was it was a couple bucks and we were already spending a little bit. So we said, why not? Let's let's just throw it in for the fun of it. In January, when I made one of these, there were a bunch of PS2 games. This is the only PS2 game and it's Pac-Man World 2. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Pac-Man World maybe a little bit later in this video, but uh, yeah, again, off the Facebook group, uh, he was going to list a bunch of PS2 games and decided not to, and whenever I was paying him, I just asked him what he had and saw this one sitting there and figured that I may or may not have bought the first one uh, off a different guy on Facebook earlier. I went ahead and grabbed this one. It's the Greatest Hits version, but I really don't care about Greatest Hits, Player's Choice, any of that stuff. I just... It doesn't matter to me. Uh, yeah, it kind of looks funky at times, and some of the colors they picked for the greatest hits, like the burgundy or the bright yellow, doesn't really stick out very well, but I kind of like the way it looks in a collection. I think things feel more organic and more uh, naturally found instead of having this whole pristine black label thing going on. But uh, yeah, so maybe one day I'll swap it out for a black label when I'm kind of on the end of buying PS2 games, but... For now, it just really doesn't bother me all that much, and I actually kind of enjoy having the different colors, like I said, so Pac-Man World 2 is going on the PS2 shelf. Moving on here to about four PS4 games. Uh, the first one I picked up at a uh, local game store, based on the cover alone, I know hardly anything about it, and it's called Surviving Mars. Uh, from the back of it, from what I can tell, it just seems like uh, you colonize Mars. I don't know, but I thought the cover of it looked really pretty, and based on some of the artwork on the back, it looks like a pretty game. Pretty game. Haven't given it a shot yet, uh, it's on the list of things to do, uh, but yeah, I saw it sitting there and figured I, I'd just take it home, which is what I seem to be doing with a lot of games. I just can't leave them sitting on the shelf, you know? Bring them home, let them join the family. Again, another game here that I bought on a whim, but I've actually been playing this one. It's called Indivisible for the PS4. I know it's on the Switch. I assume it's on Xbox, I'm not really sure, but... It's an RPG that also has like 2D platforming uh, components to it, and I'm finding it really fun. I love the art style of this game. I love the way the combat works. Um, each player in your party is on a different button on the controller, so triangle, square, X, circle for PlayStation, and there, after time they charge up a little bit. But yeah, I've been really enjoying this one quite a bit, and I'm excited to play more of it as I get further into the story. I think I'm just kind of past like the first, uh, not tutorial level, but the first little area of the game, so I'm not too far into it. But again, really love the artwork, I think it plays really well, and uh, yeah, I'm really glad that I ended up picking this one up on a whim. Get off a of Facebook group, I picked this one up, uh, Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus. Uh, this copy is very rough, looks like it has some water damage to the paper, uh, the case is really beat up, so I'm not too happy about that, couldn't really tell from the photos, but uh, I can always swap it out for a different case or just get a different copy of Wolfenstein 2. I played Wolfenstein 1, really, really, really loved that game. I actually have a uh, display board from Walmart for that game uh, in the other room, Haven't, don't really have a place to put it up since it's kind of big. But uh, yeah, really need to play this one. But I got to play the two games that came out between it, uh, Young Blood and Old Something. I can't think of it off the top of my head. Uh, so yeah, I've been wanting to play this one for a while, and now I can actually do that. The last PS4 game here is Zone of the Enders: The Second Runner Mars for the PS4, also for the PS VR, which I have. I don't have it hooked up at the moment because it's uh, I moved some of my consoles around and just haven't plugged back in yet. But now I maybe have an excuse to. I love anything that Hideo Kojima touches. Well, not everything. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 5 and Death Stranding kind of didn't really hit my taste, but that's not what this video is about. Um, so yeah, I've got a bunch of Zone of Ender games. I've got the collection on the PS3, and I think I have a PS2 Zone of the Enders game as well. Yes, I've got it down there. I bought that one mainly because it has a Metal Gear Solid 2 <laughs> demo in it. But uh, yeah, I've never actually tried anything of these out. I love the artwork on these things. Um, and yeah, maybe this will be my first foray into Zone of the Enders and I'll play it in VR and it'll be a great time. Uh, the PlayStation VR is a lot of fun and I don't play it enough. So that's why I picked this one up. Plus it's Kojima and uh, the artwork's really pretty. It's really shiny. Oh, and on the inside, it comes with this, uh, it came with this patch. This is Zone of the Enders patch. So yeah, really happy about that one. It's gonna look really good and I'm really excited to try this one out. All right, moving into the PS1 games. It's like I hinted at this one earlier in the video. This one's Pac-Man World. Uh, it's a game that I've been meaning to pick up for a long time. I know a lot of PlayStation play fans love this game. I've never played it, but as a fan of Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man, stuff like that, I'm really excited to have this one, especially since I have Pac-Man World 2, and I also have Ms. Pac-Man Maze Madness on the PS1. The only thing is I gotta get a different case for this one. It's got a big crack right here in it, as you can tell, but I'm kind of sad. I don't want to get rid of the little smiley face sticker that's sitting on here, so... Uh... Yeah, Pac-Man World, really excited to give this one a try one of these days. Uh, I'm excited to give all these games a try. I just have so many games and I keep buying games. Uh, but yeah, Pac-Man World, really happy to have this one. 
What do you know, it's another game that I bought on a whim. Uh, it's Evil Dead Hail to the King. I'm not a big Evil Dead fan, but I know that horror games always look good on video game shelves, so I couldn't pass this one up. Um, Hail to the King, it's got really nice artwork on it. This case is really, really clean. It's a two-disc game in a single case, which is kind of weird. One thing that I really like about this copy is uh, inside is a piece of paper that has cheat codes on it. Uh, let's see here. Uh, for unlimited fuel for the chainsaw. And uh, apparently when it confirms it, you'll hear, uh, <laughs> you'll hear Ash say, Hail to the King, baby. So uh, yeah, this is going to be a really nice looking game on my shelf. Uh, and uh, yeah, Evil Dead. I'm not the biggest fan of the franchise, but I'm a big fan of PS1 games. All right, the last PS1 games that we have left are the three that are in the thumbnail, the three heavy hitters. And first up is Alundra. And this game is an absolutely beautiful condition. I think they put it in a fresh jewel case. It is a PS1 jewel case because it has the PS1 logo on the inside since this is only a one disc game. Manual, great shape, hardly any damage. Looks like it's barely even been opened. Really good back on it as well, but the best part about it is it comes with the map and apparently the map is very important for this game considering a map apparently isn't in the game. I've never played it. I haven't really seen anything about it. Map is in great shape other than the folds and a little bit of damage down here, but uh, overall it's really pretty, in really good shape. I'm super stoked to have this game. Uh, there was uh, the other heavy hitter, another heavy hitter in this pile is the one that I was originally going to get at the store, but I made an offer that if I bought both of them, if he'd take a little bit off, and he said absolutely, so I walked out with a nice pristine copy of Alundra. Up next is the game that I originally intended to buy instead of Alundra, and that is Lunar Silver Star Story Complete for the PlayStation 1. This has the collector's box with it, opens up, has some artwork, uh, some little details about the game itself. And inside this cardboard box, you get a cloth map that is really, really stinking cool. Uh, not as fragile as a piece of paper, as you can imagine. You also get this really uh, nice book that has interviews and character descriptions. I think it's got a strategy guide in the back of it as well. It does, it tells you all the stuff about it, like translation notes, uh, interview with the composer, interview with the writers, interview with, the, I think, the director in here. Uh, it's a really neat little book. Uh, it's got a little bit of wear on here, but nothing too crazy. And then, of course, you have the game case itself featuring a sword, a little booty, and uh, yeah, four discs inside here are the two game discs. And on the flip side of it is the music soundtrack and a little making of uh, CD. I haven't checked either of these out yet. I did pop the game in for a little bit. I love the artwork of it. I love the anime cutscenes in it. It's really neat. Uh, yeah, the biggest problem with this uh, copy is the cardboard box itself is a little rough. As you can see, there's quite a bit of wear along the edges. It has its hang tag on the back here. It's not focused, you can't see it. Um, and then it's kind of peeling up on the front here. So I might try and glue that down or something, but uh, yeah, when I first heard about this game, I knew that I wanted it and I saw it sitting there and it was a pretty good price uh, considering the condition and whatnot. And if I ever come across a nicer condition, I'll just buy that one and then sell this one and I'll uh, make out a little bit even. So yeah, really happy to have all this Lunar uh, Silver Star story complete. Now I just have to stumble across the uh, sequel, Lunar 2 Eternal Blue, which is a little bit pricier than this one, uh, but it's also got some other stuff in it as well. So really happy to have this one. It's going to look really good on the shelf and I'm really excited to play it as well. And last done, most definitely not least, has been my White Whale for as long as I can remember. And I'm so, so happy that I finally own a copy of Toomba. Like, I can't even put into words how happy I am to finally own this game. Been looking for it for a long time. And basically what happened is I went into the game store and bought Alundra and Lunar. And I was like, you know what, I'm already spending a lot of money. Let's maybe spend a little more. And I asked the guy, I said, hey, do any of the stores you can ask the store and they'll check all their stores uh, across the country uh, if they have any game in stock and they had one copy in stock. He looked me in the eye and he said, we can do it. I said, okay, I'm going to cut to a little video here. Uh, you might have already seen it if you follow me on Twitter at one named Lucas. Um, and sorry, it's in vertical video because I originally recorded it for Twitter, but that's going to explain a little more into detail my excitement about Toomba. So uh, yeah, here's that. Hey everybody, I figured I'd do a Twitter uh, video for this instead of just like a normal tweet because it's something that's uh, really special to me. Um, first off, I know my hair is not the prettiest. I rolled straight out of bed and went straight to the game store where they called me and said that they had to transfer in. Uh, you can ask them if, for a game and they'll check all their store's inventories and if they have it, they'll mail it to the, the store that's closest to you. And I did that for one and I'm really 
really excited about it. I'm so pumped. Um, when I was a little kid, I had this demo disc right here, Interactive CD, Volume 7 on the back. It's got Gran Turismo, Hot Shots Golf, Tekken 3, and Blasto. But there was one demo on that disc that I played more than any other. I played it over and over and over, and eventually I, uh, and I've always wanted to own this game. I've always wanted to own it. And um, <laughs> when I was... Uh, Somewhere like high school, I think I decided to emulate it and I got about like a quarter halfway through it somewhere in that range And I was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to ruin this for me I, I want to wait till I own this game So I uh, waited and waited and my goal was I didn't want to order it online and when I was a little kid There weren't many retro game stores in my area Just game stops and or EV games is what it used to be I guess um, but they didn't really have PlayStation 1 games and uh, yeah, so uh, some of the the retro game stores I, I found out about too late they were closing or whatever and of course they don't have any copies of this game then so uh yeah I, I was gonna order it online but I always wanted to find it in a store I wanted to find it on the shelf and buy it right there I wanted to be like super hype when I see it on the shelf and I'm like ah it's this game but uh I, as now I've been collecting uh for almost two years now I uh, realized that that's kind of not like silly like it's still feasible, but the odds of it happening is kind of highly improbable. So uh, finally, I decided I bought a couple other heavy hitters that I tweeted about uh, a little bit longer, and I went ahead and asked, I was like, hey, do you have this game in stock? And he's like, I don't know, that game very rarely shows up, and when it does, it doesn't last very long. I was like, alright, well, he checked, and he's like, we can do it. He said, we can do it. And ladies and gentlemen, I am now a proud owner of Tuma! <laughs> I'm so happy to own this game. I've wanted this game for a long, long time. Uh, it's in great shape. It's got a, I think they put it in a brand new jewel case, which I'm happy with. Manual is in good shape. Looks like it's hardly done. It's even got the PlayStation Underground. If I can open it here. Maybe. One-handed. The PlayStation Underground uh, little card thing. So, yeah, I'm excited. I'm actually going to play it now. And then it's going to go right on my special shelf, or our me and one named wife's uh, special shelf where we keep like games that are super important to us if it's gonna go right right there that's where it's gonna go my god i'm so happy i'm so happy so yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm really excited about all the games that I picked up here in the month of February. A lot of them mean uh, pretty much something to me. So uh, not only did I just increase the quantity of my collection, I increased them with quality games uh, that are kind of special. So especially the three heavy hitters and of course Toomba being the, the prize whale of them all. Now it's on to my next white whale, which is uh, Metal Gear Ghost Battle for the Game Boy completing the box. Gotta stumble across one of those. Who knows when that'll be? It'll probably be a while. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this one, like I said. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click the like button down below. It really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe so you know the next time I release a video, I try and release something every day, whether it's part of a playthrough or a uh, another standalone video or one of these game hauls. I kind of want to make one of these at least once a month or every two months depending on how often I pick up games. I might take March a little slow since I spent more this month than normal. Uh, but yeah, I think that's going to do it for this one. Like I said, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I'll see you all in the next one.